Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at your news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. On Wednesday, there was a whole lot of excitement downtown along 5th Street between Walnut and Main. The River Market Rail Rally celebrated two major milestones for the Kansas City Streetcar Project. All of the rail has now been installed along the 2.2 mile streetcar line and we also unveiled the first KC Art installation as part of the 1% for Art program. We thank the City of Kansas City and the Art Commission for their commitment to art on the streetcar project. We couldn't be happier with the end product. It looks great, doesn't it? Everybody think it looks good? It looks fantastic. It looks great. I want to also take this opportunity to recognize the artist, uh, Selena Curry, who's down here on the end. Selena is an illustrator and graphic artist from Kansas City. She's a graduate of Kansas City Art Institute's illustration department, and she has been great to work with. What we are all witnessing, and what a lot of people said could not happen, is we are witnessing a huge boom in economic development throughout the entire TDD. Since voters approved the streetcar system two years ago, downtown Kansas City has been the recipient of over $1.3 billion of development projects under construction, completed, or announced. I just want to make sure that you heard it right. I didn't say $1.3 million, I said $1.3 billion. Okay? The art installation is just the first of many creative flourishes that you'll see popping up all along the downtown Kansas City streetcar route. This fall, the streetcar vehicles will be delivered and testing of the track will continue for several months. Riders will then be aboard in 2016. The force will be strong as Comic-Con invades the Kansas City Convention Center. Big stars will be in Kansas City, including Sean Astin from Lord of the Rings and the Goonies and Colin Baker from Doctor Who. Don't be surprised to see some colorfully costumed characters walking the streets downtown. As a reminder, the recent heat has proven deadly for several Kansas City pets. It can take only minutes for temperatures in your car to rise above 110 degrees, and that's life-threatening for animals and children. Never leave a child or a pet in your car. Also, be sure your pets have plenty of water and keep them out of the sun and preferably indoors. When the temperatures heat up, remember that you can go to any of the city's 10 community centers to cool off during regular hours. Also, don't use a fan as your primary source of cooling and be sure to check on your neighbors, friends, and relatives twice a day. For more tips to beat the heat, visit kcmo.gov and search heat. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. First question I have, who was here 20 years ago? That's a pretty good representation. Uh, as we're all aware, uh, on the, the longest day of the year, uh, June 21st, uh, 20 years ago, this fountain was dedicated. So we're here today to celebrate a uh, 20-year milestone in the Children's Fountain. We're going to talk a lot about the details related to that fountain as we progress through our program this morning. So that's a significant milestone. And, you know, fountains take, uh, at least the weather, I should say, takes a little wear and tear on your fountains. Uh, freezing and uh, growing temperatures, the uh, humidity, uh, the, uh, of course, just the moisture itself takes a little toll on our fountains. So we've been involved in the uh, Wish Upon a Fountain campaign throughout our city and a lot of great fountains are being restored to, through the efforts of private fundraising efforts from the City of Fountains Foundation. And this is one of them today that uh, we want to make some announcements on our next step to do some necessary repairs to this particular children's fountain. There's some photographs over here on the board that show you some of the examples of what needs to be done. The fountain is running great right now and the water's flowing through it and this gives you a little way to see some of the things that deteriorated over time. I think you all know that we have a great fountain, but you probably also know that we've got the best park director in the whole country. And I say that, Mark, when you're not around. <laughs> this fountain tells the world what the Northland is about. Because when we turned on the Northland Fountain in 1983, people almost immediately said, we need a fountain with sculptures. And so the community said, well, what sort of sculptures should we have? And there was a poll taken, and it was overwhelmingly that it should be of children. 
because children are our greatest asset. I think that says a lot about the Northland. But I, I do want to uh, just just say that this is, it marks another success in our in our two-year campaign with Wish Upon a Fountain to raise uh, private dollars uh, to fix uh, some of the exceptional, take care of some of the exceptional needs of eight, now nine different fountains in the city. Uh, this particular fountain, of course, the Children's Fountain, is one of the most iconic fountains in the city. People always have their picture taken here. You see it in brochures. You see it when national TV is in town for an athletic event or whatever. You see the J.C. Nichols Fountain, and you very, very often see the Children's Fountain. And then we started the plans for this, and so eventually we came up with this uh, oval uh, idea, this oval fountain installation idea, and then also decided to use uh, some of the uh, children from uh, the Northland as models for this. So anyway, the whole project probably took about a year and a half, and uh, it, the, the most satisfying thing about it is people still uh, will pull me aside and say that this is their favorite uh, fountain in Kansas City that they bring their friends and family over here all the time and uh, so that is probably the most pleasurable part of the whole thing so uh, I feel honored to have been given this project 20 years ago and it's great to be here uh, again today. Thank you very much. I was asked to state what does it mean to me to be one of the figures that was actually sculpted in the Children's Fountain and I have to say I came up on the airplane with a couple of items, just five I'll briefly go through. <laughs> One is that it's a time capsule of the youth, of not myself, it's the youth of Kansas City. Every time you look at one of these, especially myself now at 852, I don't see myself. I see all children. It also represents my roots for family and education. As you see, I was born here and raised, but I also was a graduate of Park Hill High School. And being a graduate of Park Hill High School has actually provided me with the opportunity and the education not only to become a lawyer, but also to practice entirely throughout the world. It represents my youth and also my peers who played soccer in the Northland soccer fields. It represents to me a reminder that from humble beginnings, one can actually achieve greatness. And finally, it taught me that if one does give of one's own self, eventually others will follow. Case in point, as it was explained to me by Anita Gorman, Audrey, Audrey the very first sculptor of a young girl on the very end. I can't tell, but Audrey's actually an African American. At that time, there was not much integration going on, and yet here, in our fountain, there is a form of integration going on. And that's basically my thoughts. So I thank you very much for supporting this fountain. It means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to our community. You've heard the expression, it's as easy as riding a bike. If you're a Kansas City, Missouri police officer, it isn't as easy as you think. Riding a bike requires much more skill for patrolling the streets. Members of the KCPD Bike Patrol completed one of the most elite certifications for a bicycle. It's a week-long challenging course of the International Police Mountain Bike Association, or what's called IPMBA. We're going to take you on a ride along with Officer Darren Lutz of the Central Patrol Division to see if you'd pass the test. I tell them all when they get here, everybody can jump on a bike usually and take off riding down the road. You're usually going at a pretty good pace. Uh, you're pedaling, you're looking up, you really don't have to concentrate on anything. The second we get them into a nine foot box where they're limited on the size and area that they can pedal and go in a circle, they tell whether or not they have the balance or the ability to ride slow. Slow riding is much harder than riding faster on a bicycle. The equipment is a Cannondale 26 inch rim wheel mountain bike, which makes it easy to maneuver obstacles like riding down steps and hopping a curb. The bike patrol has been around since 1995 and has a unique advantage over other equipment used by the department. We can get around when the traffic is so congested. We, on a bike, we can get around much easier. We're much more visible. We're out. Our uniforms are retro-reflective, so they kind of glow and light up at night when lights hit us and stuff. We're more, I think we're more uh, approachable by the public. We sometimes act as tour guides. We get a lot of people from out of town, some that have never been to a bigger city, and they have no idea where to go. So we give a lot of information to people. Despite the disadvantages, there are some special challenges. 
a car protects you somewhat from a lot of things, whether it be a crash or a fender bender or just the elements, the heat. Uh, you at least get to in a patrol car, get back into a car for even for a short little time to get a little bit of air conditioning or a little bit of uh, uh, heat. Here you don't. You're outside, you're in the elements, and you're in them for the entire in the duration of your patrol. So you're stuck outside, so you have to prepare very well. We have a very small bag on the back of our bike. It's got to hold all of our equipment that we might need to go out in, and we try and get it in there and keep it. So that's one of the challenges. The International Police Mountain Bike Association course is used by public safety agencies around the world. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Our big announcement is that our baby chimp has his name and his name is Milo. Hi, my name is Cinnamon Williams and I'm animal curator here at the Kansas City Zoo. Milo, you will always see him with his mom. His mom is Rachel. He's starting to teeth now, so you'll see him a lot with his hands in his mouth or biting down on his mother's hands or her arm. He's starting to try to stand on his own. You'll see her holding his hands up and so he'll start bouncing and try to stand on his own. If you'll notice, his face is more beige color. He's starting to get darker in the face um, compared to when they're adults. They'll have the whole dark face. He'll start looking more like them when he's closer to like five or six years old. These guys are ambassadors to chimps out in the wild. So we want folks to come out, learn about how they can help with conservation with the chimps. And also, you can learn the different stages. We have not only Milo, which is our baby chimp, but we also have a teenager. Well, what we classify as a chimp teenager, but she's seven years old, and she doesn't actually look like the adult chimps either, but you can see different stages of life during chimps. You can see their natural behaviors and how they act as a troop. Patty is our oldest chimp at 50 years old, um, so you'll definitely see baby all the way up to older chimp Patty. So we want to invite people out to do that. Of course, come see the cute baby, but come see all the other cute chips and animals too. Last year, Kansas City's animal control officers rescued almost 4,000 animals which were brought to the city's animal shelter for care. A recent fee increase for adoption and drop-off services at the Kansas City Animal Shelter, which was authorized by the City Council, will provide additional funding for the care of neglected animals rescued by our officers. This is the first fee increase there since 2006. A complete list of fees can be found at kcmo.gov, search animal control. Each Sunday evening, now through August, come out to hear some cool jazz at Summertime on the Vine from 6 to 9 p.m. The bands perform at the J. McShann Pavilion behind the American Jazz Museum at 18th and Vine. Bring your lawn chairs and blankets and enjoy the evening. It's almost back to school time and that means Kansas City residents can take advantage of the annual back to school three day sales tax holiday. It's Friday, August 7th through Sunday, August 9th. Shoppers who buy certain items of clothing, shoes, school supplies, and computers in Kansas City, Missouri stores will not have to pay any sales tax. Eligible items include clothing priced up to $100, school supplies up to $50 per purchase, personal computers valued at up to $3,500, and many other back-to-school items. For a complete list of those eligible items, visit dor.mo.gov tax and search back-to-school. To view this program again or any other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel as well as a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week and stay cool.